Today is uh, Thursday, April 19th. And um, today's video is actually follow up, or should I say, a continuation of um, the previous video that we did. The video was labeled titled um, Cultivating Cultivating the Tai Chi Ball, actually. And I said I would do a follow-up, a review, give some more details. There's always more details, and uh, I can't always give all the details in, in one lesson, in, in, in a live lesson, let alone in a video recorded lesson. So that's why we do the, do the follow-up. But, um, yeah, we were talking about cultivating the Tai Chi ball. And actually, some, some of you all actually embarked on that journey that we started, the 100-day uh, 100, 100 challenge. Not even a challenge, but the 100-day. You know, I look at it as a personal challenge. It doesn't have to be a challenge. But not even a goal, but 100-day transformation. We talked about basically doing 100 days of mindfulness training. I don't like to look at it as being a challenge. You look at it as being a challenge and it's like you're already setting up, uh, you know, like obstacles in your mind or whatever. So, but anyway, congratulations to the people who just embarked on the journey. There's several people that started just started their first time quite some time ago and they're, they're continuously doing it and moved on to other things. Not that you ever stop doing the initial lessons, you just build, it keeps building. So we're talking about cultivating the ball. <clears throat> I introduced, actually I introduced a method for people who, who, who uh, didn't know a method or actually I asked everyone to try the method, Count, counting the breath, remember that? That, that um, simple but not so simple meditation, yep. So we went over that. I see the iguanas and stuff are starting to hang out because it's kind of warm out here. I don't think you can see him. He's running away now. Yes, he was out here sunbathing, doing doing his his mindfulness training, and I came out here and interrupted. But he's like running down the, uh, and he's blended in. He's standing still right now. He's beyond the ladder there. You can see him standing. But anyway, you had 100 days, 100 days of mindfulness training, and we did the counting the breath method. So you should actually go ahead and, if you hadn't started out, go ahead and look on my website, www.seafoodlester.com, and we're all doing it there as a uh, community. You know, 100 days of mindfulness training, and there's a reason for doing it 100 days without missing a day, 100 consecutive days. Actually, I give all the instructions there. But anyway, I'm going to show you now, actually, a method of, um, once you cultivate the Tai Chi ball, how we move a little further into... Splitting the, splitting the Tai Chi ball, how you split it, how you turn it, how you turn it on the uh, on the left and right side. And before we were actually doing everything from a from a sitting from a sitting position. Remember. So now we want to go from sitting to actually standing. And there's a proper way that we would like to uh, start standing when, when we do the pro when we do the practice. So I'm going to show that to you. So actually, I had to go back and grab my tripod because I'm going to be standing. Just reminded me of that. Also, this this is going to be on my blog. And there's going to be a lot more instruction on the blog. 
written written instruction I have diagrams very thorough diagrams to explain every detail every detail also feel free to post some questions on the website you know we're gonna keep building on this and this is the uh, this is getting you prepared actually for my first for my first um, I have a video a video lesson that's coming out and it's gonna be a five style stepping so we, we start out sitting <clears throat> Building the Tai Chi ball, cultivating the Tai Chi ball, and then we learn how to stand. And then from standing, we learn how to walk, you know, and it's five style stepping. And it's basically the five styles are just dealing with five different directions, forward, backwards, left, right, and then there's also center. And all that's associated with uh, the Chinese have uh, the different elements, you know, metal, earth, and all of that, you know, so you can if you want to embark on that journey and start studying all of that so much information online and that's not the intention of what this is today to explain like the elements and stuff like that but anyway bear with me we're going to get into a quick review on cultivating the tai chi ball Actually, I'll do it. I'll do this standing actually because we're just going to be paying attention to the hands. All right, so here we are for now. It's just you know, review cultivating the tai, tai Chi ball, and we're going to start with uh, like I said, just the hands. And you can do this this uh, particular exercise sitting down. This is a review to some of you all, but anyway. I'll start taking you through some of the instruction for the practice. So we've been sitting before, now we're standing. Just pay attention to the hand for now, because I want to tell you the proper way to get to the standing position. All right, so here we are, we're holding our hands. And this is for people who really doesn't have any uh, sense of the chi in their body, and they want to start getting a sense of the chi, building, building it up also mobilizing the chi, all right? Being able to move it around throughout your body for healing purposes, also martial, for anything else that you do. You know, so. so first of all, we want to find a, a, a quiet place. Quiet. So, quiet place helps you quiet the inside of your body, but you have to have a quiet inside. Meaning that you, you, you can't have a lot of chatter going on in your mind. So that's why I introduced that, that, that meditation method to you where you can quiet your mind first. That's when you're sitting down. You know, you're sitting down and you can just quiet your mind by counting your breath. And once you learn how to quiet your mind, now you begin to be able to move into this, which is feeling the chi, feeling the energy. So what you want to do is bring your hands close together. Relax your hands first of all, they're not tense, they're relaxed. The thumbs are relaxed. I see a lot of people have their thumbs up like this when they're when they're holding a Tai Chi ball. Now let your thumbs relax in, in a natural position. Always have space between the fingers. So my hands are facing each other. So it's not like this where some people are holding hugging the tree. This is different. Alright. So here when the hands Come in, feel your, uh, right now I'm looking at my hands, but later I won't be, and nor, nor should you be. I'm just looking for, uh, just to give you some instruction. So as the palms come close to each other, feel what's happening. Some people feel heat. Some people feel a magnetism. Some people feel uh, a repulsion or, put, you know, like, or repelling or it's pushing away as opposed to coming together so coming together will be more yin more yin feeling going together going away that will be more of a push like you know more of a yang yang feeling expansion as the hands come close together 
lit the Lao box, which is like the center. No. There's an energy center here. So we talked about a Dante in here before. If you don't know what a Dante is, go back and look at the first video. We talked about it here. So we have lower, lower Dante in. We have middle, which is the heart. And then we have upper, which is here. Some people call it the third eye. I call it the first eye. And then there's more. We got them here. We got them so many places. They're, they're larger and smaller. They're all over. But so now, when the palms come together, don't let the fingers come together because we get used to feeling with our fingers. So let our fingers relax. Let the Lao Gongs kind of like come close together. Remember, thumbs are up like that, that means you're, you're stretching the thumbs. So just let them relax. So as the hands come close together and you're standing, you want to close your eyes. And then as the hands expand, you want to open your eyes. Make all, make all of these little details part of your practice. When you open your eyes, I talked about this last time, don't spread your eyes open so big, you know. So have your eyes kind of kind of squinting, but not, not forcing them to squint. So they're like kind of closed, but not closed, which also brings in your peripheral vision. You know, so in Tai Chi, we, we want to work on our peripheral vision. Everybody, I say, should work with their peripheral vision. So it's, it's part of sensitivity training. You know, awareness is sensitivity to me. So you want to be a, be sensitive to everything around you, right? So you get into the right, the right vision. Even when you do your forms, we practice our forms that way. All right. So here, remember this part. Remember these details. Palms come together. Close your eyes. When they spread apart, open your eyes. And you just work on that practice, all right? This is a review from the first video, all right? You're, you're sitting down now. Before you are just sitting there holding the ball, now you're, about, you're, you're starting to let it breathe. So now let's talk about the breath. When the palms go apart, you imagine inflating, so inhaling. You are the Tai Chi ball, right? So your body is doing the same thing that your hands are. So your body's expanding contracting right so now that we're let's go ahead and talk about standing so this is what I do at the beginning of my practice I walk out I stand I empty my mind and I begin like this here this is part of my everyday routine here this is part of my uh, going into my bow so all of this is all this is significant everything that's going on I actually did a video on the bow so many details, just in the bow. Right? So I've done my bow. I'm doing my bow. This is before I begin my practice. This is preparing me to begin my practice. Mentally, physically, everything. So it's preparing my body to get the correct shape. And everything. Right? So now, my weight distribution. The bottom of my feet. So first of all, my feet are about um, shoulders width apart. In other words, I don't want to have my feet so wide apart. This is like my natural stance. This is my natural stance. So we start out at our natural stance. My weight distribution is 50% on one foot, 50% on the other foot. So 50-50 weight distribution. My knees are slightly bent. They're always slightly bent throughout all of my practices. All right? I never hyperextend the knee or straighten the knee. When you do that, you're going to start causing yourself uh, knee injuries. All right? So keep the knee slightly bent. Also, the elbows, they, they, they're also just like the knees. They're going to be slightly bent. So you don't want to hyperextend the elbow, you know? You want to keep it always, always in a natural state, which is slightly bent, all right? And remember, we don't want to have any restrictions in our body. You know, you know it, restricts, it restricts the energy flow, the way that, the, way that the, the natural energy just wants to move, move through our body. And if, it's, if you're locked in one spot here, that means the energy can't pass past, past my knee. So it's locked between this space down here and it wants to come up here, you know? So I have to learn the proper way to stand. So here we are my natural, natural uh, distance apart, 
all right? So now, remember, we always want to have a crown point. Talked about that as well. Going straight up to the uh, sky. In other words, we don't want to have our head looking down or sideways or our chin out like this, you know? We want to have our spine in a natural straight position. And the way to do that is to have the crown up so my chin slightly tucked in. My chest is relaxed, which helps round out my shoulders. We want to be relaxed, remember? Quiet, so we can listen inside and feel all these things I'm talking about, all these minute adjustments within our body. So we have to be quiet inside to feel it. Any tension, you let it, let it dissolve, all right? Also, our tailbone, the coccyx, tip of the tailbone, all right? The very tip of the tailbone. We want to imagine that that tailbone is going straight into the ground. It's uh, what I like to imagine, or what, what Sifu actually told me, was to start imagining that we have a third leg that is extended. It, it, it's extended like a tail, you know? So imagine that. So energetically, that tail is not there. I mean, physically, there's no tail there. But energetically, imagine extending your tailbone into the ground, and that serves as your third leg. So you don't want to. You don't want to have your third leg under like this. See what it does to my back, All right? You don't want that. You want to have it here. You don't want to have it out the other way either. Now that's an extreme going the other way, right? So you got to find the natural position. All right. Knees are slightly bent. I say don't don't bend them too much because this is going to require a lot more endurance and strength in the legs unless you're working on that. And for right now, we're not working on that. So find a higher position where you feel comfortable. And let's get back to the ball. So you're about shoulders width apart. 50-50 weight distribution. Third leg going down. Head extended up. Breathe in. Now, when you breathe out, relaxation will cause the body to slightly descend downward. You can feel it. The diaphragm rises and falls. At that point, as it starts to descend, you slowly start to shift your weight or allow your weight to shift. Allow your weight to shift is different from shifting your weight over to the uh, left leg in my, in my, uh, from my perspective, it's my left leg. All right, so you should be able to lift your foot off the ground. We're getting ready to get into the proper standing position. So now, the tip of my toe goes out and touches the ground, but I don't put, I don't allow any weight to be on that right leg. Not yet. Everything is still here. Now, you should be able to withdraw, you should be able to withdraw your leg without moving your body at some point. Maybe you can do it now, maybe you can't. At the same time, I don't want to be leaning over because now my shoulder has passed my hip. Right? So you have to make sure that you have the vertical alignment on this side at all times. Alright? So now I've stepped out just the tip of my toe. I continue to turn my toe inward pointing across my body, the angle, not quite 45 degrees, maybe 35 or less. Now I allow my weight to go down and it transitions over, over to the right side. Over to my right leg now. So I'm gonna go back. So before the transition over, right, we were here toe, the heel or my ankle goes out which allows my foot to turn on a 35 degree angle or less across my body. Now before you shift over, pay attention to this. Is your body in a relaxed state which allows your body to sink before you shift over? 
this, that's going to allow you to keep your root. If you're up here and you shift over, notice I didn't go down first. Up here, I have no root. Because my lower dantian is, I just pulled it up. Everything is up. So I want to make sure it's down, all right? So let's start over again. Go through all those checks that we just did, you know, wild in, crown point, tail. You have to check these things every time. There's no rush. And you're going to be adding more things in to check. And then soon you don't have to think about them anymore. They just happen, all right? 50 50 weight distribution. Exhale. Body starts to descend. Now, this descension, this descension is initiated from my tailbone so the tailbone pulls down all right so as my tailbone pulls down that's going to allow notice i said allow once again not make that's going to allow my knees to slightly bend by my tailbone extending extending downward so you following what i'm saying right Exhale, down, I shift over, I'm shifting over, allowing the shifting to happen, over to my left leg, right, whole time you're holding the ball, but I'm just focusing on the legs for now, the feet, toe touches the ground first, no weight on that left leg, my weight is down, now I'm, I'm allowing my weight to transfer over to the other side, which happens to be my right side, now, at this point, I look down, make sure my knee is not past my toe. So it's not out past the tip of my toe. This would hurt my, this would hurt my knee. All right, so pay attention to these things. Don't violate these things. Okay, so I'm over here now. At this point, and I want to make sure I'm not over here. I'm not over here. All these things are still happening, right? At this point, I should be able to pick up my left foot without really having to move my body. Notice my body is not moving, it's not doing this. All right, over time, it'll happen. You may be able to do it now. I don't know, but here we are. So I'm over here now, right? So now I turn my, right, my left toe in on 35 degree angle or less. So I'm duplicating what I did on the opposite side, if that makes sense to you. Going across this way right from my left side going across my right side that's the angle 35 degrees or less now remember make sure my weight is down before i let it shift across my body back over to my left side completely this time my right foot doesn't move and then i just shift back into the center so after all of that, now we're ready to start playing with this Tai Chi ball. I'm gonna show you how to, um, well, we've been through it already, how to hold it this way, right? So you can hold it this way, hand, palms on top, feeling what you were feeling before, remember? Making it smaller and larger. So now you can turn it. And I'm gonna also show you how to, remember the thumb should be relaxed. I'm gonna show you how to um, split the Tai Chi ball. So I'm gonna go over the feet again first. All right, in the beginning, it's probably just your hands moving. Later, you'll notice, you, you know, your whole body starts to make this movement. All right, down here, up here. But we train all these different sections very specific exercises, all right? Remember, deal with the lao long. Don't let the, the uh, palms grip on the ball. Let the ball just be there, all right? So now I'm gonna show you the footwork again, then we're gonna split the ball. So I did my bow in, I'm standing here, weight's 50-50. You can always review this video anytime and ask questions too, right on the website, www.seafoodlester.com. Be on my YouTube as well. C 
seafood lesson. 50-50, relax. Breathe out, I can feel the weight now and the sinking now. And the knees are starting to actually bend and they like feel like they're being pulled up. My knees feel like they're being pulled up. Huh? Now I allow my weight to settle in on my left side. Now I can step out to my right side. Shifting over to my right side laterally. Laterally, meaning side to side. Make sure it's a direct shift so I'm not turning my body. None of that. All right? So now I'm on my right side, turning my foot, shifting over to my left side, all the way over. Now back to center. Practice that until you get it real smooth. Some people think it's easy. A lot of, most people, I'll say that. And then I'll say, show it to me. And they just screw it up. So you gotta get that right. Now we're holding the ball. And I can really feel mine. Right? So now here. Turning the ball, right? So now you can start turning from one side to the other. Right side. Now watch the ball. See how it's turning? Left side. Pay attention to the directions of my hands. Fingers on the bottom. They're pointing laterally. The fingers on the top. They're pointing straight out. Right. Don't have a really tiny one. Make it larger, but don't make it too large because notice that my elbow went, high, went higher than my uh, shoulder. So that raises my shoulder out of the uh, joint, out of the socket. Have it large. This one here is right at my waist level here. Belt. Belt channel. We call it the belt channel. That's where it feels good to me. Turn it. When you turn it, you're holding the ball here. Get used to turning it even more. Turn it even more. Now when you turn more, think about Remember, we talk about the third leg and the tail. So wiggle your tail. There's space back there. Makes a completely different, different feeling with your move. So here, relax here so this joint can move. That can rotate, see? I can wiggle my tail out into this, see? So it goes like this. And as it comes back, it's like a figure eight. It comes back this way. Then I begin to turn back this way. You get the idea? Boom. All right? So here, right? There's space back here, right? The ball coming in this way. So this tailbone Oh, you can think about the, the way the energy goes that way. As it comes back, makes a figure eight. Which takes you back around this way. So don't get caught up on that, but play with that, play with wiggling that tail, I'm telling you. See? And turn it as much as you can and look back there. Look over that look over that shoulder. That right shoulder. Turn. So this is turn turning the Tai Chi ball left and right. Notice our feet are still in the same position. Remember the hands. One on the top, fingers pointing this way, 
straight, the one on the bottom, this way. Feeling with the loud arm, not like uh, squeezing the ball. When you get here, turn it some more. You're gonna feel tightness here, release it, let it dissolve. If anything here tight, release it, let it resolve, dissolve. Let that go around and turn so it goes around, it goes around here. And then it goes back, which causes the ball to turn back around. That's the energy. You can feel the route. It's a route. It's a natural route. If you're doing a... Forget about going fast for now, or with power. Just having tension and think about all these different um, directions that I tell you, things that I tell you to check out. So make sure you play with the turn. First, you have to cultivate it and build it up. And stand in meditation with the ball like this is going to help you get the proper structure. All right. So we've been doing the turn in the ball. We're going to teach you how to split the ball. This actual split resembles um, repulse monkey. Yeah, it resembles the repulse monkey. It's awesome. Start off here. Facing you, right? So, front hand, turn sideways also so you can see the top hand. Look at the top. So the fingers on the top are pointing towards my uh, my left, so my right hand is on the top, but the fingers are pointing towards my left. Most people have the hand here for a false monkey and they do it this way. But just do this exercise this way for a minute. You may see something different. All right, so hold the hand this way, pointing across. All right, bottom hand, the fingers are pointing straight. So now we're going to hold the ball here and go into this position here. So on my left side. So now my right hand is going to extend forward. My left hand goes backwards. And then they both turn up. Palms are up now. See that? Both palms are up now. So we started here. That's what we started here a few weeks ago. Cultivate big, small. Now we turn. It's on our left side. Right hand is going forward. So it's one ball. Now they split now, meaning from one to two. One is going forward, it's turning this way, it's rotating, and then it's going forward here. As this hand goes out, it's just going out, it's just listening. It's like a, a say it's like a, a radar just listening feeling feeling what's out there any interference you know just feeling that's all it's doing so let's do it again mm -hmm. elbow goes down that elbow goes down which makes the circle here see which means circle a slight uh, forward. So notice my elbow is not extended. It's not straight because we have to always keep it bent. Remember we talked about that? So now that we're here, let's look at this left hand. Left hand, fingertips extend down. Down, pointing down. Not stiff and straight, a little bit rounded, but 
down towards the uh, earth, actually into into the earth. Right. So these fingertips actually resemble your tailbone because they're it's doing the same thing down into the earth. Go back off to the uh, what? That's like 45 degree angle here, corner. Right. If you imagine yourself being in the center of a square box, that would be like a 45 degree cone. This comes in towards the ear. Here. Turn. Comes here. Now the left hand is on the top. And then it has a bigger, see the ball is larger. Alright. What's going to happen is balls are going to go from being large, it's going to contract, going to contract. Yeah, it's contracted. The elbow goes down. So it's a repetitive. Separate, so you can follow. Left hand, go, um, right hand. I'm sorry. Right hand goes up here. Don't don't lift up the shoulder. Point toward the sky. Imagine actually embracing everything that that is here. All of that, the clouds, the wind, all that's coming in here on this level, like through your ear. All right. Imagine listening to whatever you just gathered. You just focusing. All right. Concentration. Then it comes here. Remember, you had a feeling before when you were doing this. So, is there a feeling here? Check it out. You feel it? Are your fingers still relaxed? Compress. Split. I imagine all of that water here. I'm lifting up. Notice I'm not lifting up my elbow again, once again, or my shoulder. The clouds, those trees, all of that is here. I'm listening to it here. Right here where my ear is. Like on the telephone. Large. I gathered all of that, gathered it. Then I compress it, right? When I compress this, I compress it into a very small, small, small space. The smaller you can imagine the space, the better. I say imagine it being as small as the uh, tip of a pencil, tip of a needle. Press, split. All right. Elbow down creates a circle. See this hand here? Point down towards the earth. Don't forget this stuff. Point down towards the earth, trust me. All this stuff I'm talking about, the spatial awareness, like, you know, gathering all of this, and bringing it in like this, feeling the wind blowing on it. Compressing into a small space. Right into the middle of my loud line. I'll make it real small. Go down both not just this not just this one the one on the rear also so when I put this one down it turns my palm it turns my wrist up right same thing here all right chest concave now not this 
can't be connected, you stop the flow. See, my, now my shoulders are locked. All right? So there's always details, and as I said before, there's no way in the world I can give them all to you in one lesson, nor can anyone else. That's why we keep keep building, keep going together, working together, and we always share more and more about this stuff. So splitting the Tai Chi ball now. See? Got a finger to point in here. Where's my midline? See? All of the stuff is happening at the same time, both hands. Right? See? Chin, not out like this. Yeah. Always checking. So now you know how to cultivate the ball. You know how to rotate the ball. You know how to split the ball. At least you know how to start working on them. A lot of information. Those of you that's practicing it, keep in touch and let me know, and we can continue to add to what you already have. But this is a follow-up from the last video. This is the second one. It's on the uh, website, actually. It's a blog, and this is the second one. So tune in, www.seafoodlester.com, www.seafoodlester.com. Notice how I always see, come back to my center, right? Remember I stepped out? Now I'll step in. So, as I said earlier, this is just a... Uh, getting everybody tuned up for all the information that I'm putting out. Tai Chi stepping is coming out soon, so thank you all. Thank you.